to bless the men today. And so I'm going to bless you today in Jesus' name, and you will be blessed. Now, yeah, that's right. Sisters, you ought to praise God, because here's why. Because if you get one, you want a man with the blessing on him. You don't want him uh, perpetrating. You want him to have the substance on him. Amen. If he become your man, you say, first thing I want to know, are you blessed? Because if you ain't blessed, you are, then I'm, look, I'm heading into some trouble. So, sisters, you ought to be praying real hard today, you know, huh? that the men will get this blessing today. Because who knows? He may become yours. <laughs> or he's already yours. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I've, I've, I've listened to my heart on this today. And so first of all, the Bible said in the Psalms, if the foundation of the righteous be destroyed, what will the righteous do? The foundation of the righteous be destroyed. First and foremost, whether we accept it or agree with it or not, then, you know, your opinion is your opinion, but it has nothing to do with what the words say. That's fine authority, at least in my life. And it should be in yours if you are a professing Christian, then you don't have no option about that. That the Bible is fine authority. If God's word said, arguments stop. I mean, you agree. The foundation of the righteous is built first upon the family. You got it? That's the foundation, the family. And if that be so, then the head of that family is a man. Uh, well, you know, I don't care what's popular in our society. The, the Bible's still true. God ordained it that way, that a man should lead the way. Amen. So, and now, that, that, that puts a, a little uh, light on the subject, don't it? Because how can you lead when you don't know where you're going? No, 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 I came to bless the men today so because I could weigh you out on that one. But uh, you're going to get a blessing today. And in light of some truth, it will help you sus sustain what you get today. You know, I, I came here on this street years ago because God blessed me. That's what did it. So I came here by the blessing of God. I am here today by the blessing of God. So it's real. You can't talk me out of it. It worked. And the blessing is so powerful, it, it will defy and it will eradicate and stop everything and anything that's against that blessing on your life. Even when you don't know it, the Lord will fight for you when he put his blessings on you. When he put his blessings on you, he will fight for you. And if God fight for you, there's no adversary that can stand up against you successful. Because if the Lord is for us, who, what can be against us? Oh, hallelujah. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, will he not through him freely give us all things? Give us all things. There's nothing in this earth that God will withhold from you if you allow him to cause his blessing to come on your life and order your footsteps. And the believer shall say, Amen. so then if that be so, then we, we need to work on men all the time, don't we? Men need to be worked on. And I showed you the transition from a man. He started first off as a boy. Amen. Amen. And you go from uh, boyhood into manhood. It's a process. And who said it was easy? It's not easy. But God have called us to go from those uh, different processes till we end up into fatherhood. Amen. Because the foundation of the righteous 
is the man over that house, over that family. And that's why things are so crazy today, because we haven't allowed God's order to take place. Let's look at, first of all, let's talk about a blessed man. How many blessed men in the house? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you're going to have a greater blessing on you. You came here today for pastor to bless you. Amen. Amen. You came here today for pastor to bless you. That's why you're here. And I'm going to do my part. And you're going to do your part. Amen. You know, when a word from a prophet come to you, one of the things you simply have to do is just receive it and meditate on it. And it'll come to pass on your life. Amen. What I say you have to do? Receive it and meditate on it. Don't, don't think it's going to be magic. It's not magic. You have to fight the fight of faith for everything that God does for you. But when he hits you with this blessing, like it changed my life, it will change your life. I don't care how you came here today. You're going to leave better. And you're going to leave with a greater blessing on you because God have decreed it to be so. And nobody face, eyes, nose, or anything else change what I believe here. Because God going to do what he said. Hallelujah. I said, God going to do what he said. He started me off confirming what he want to do today. He didn't have to do that. But he did it. He loved you that much in here. That's how much he loved you. And that's how much you have a part of his plan in this time you're living in. Hallelujah. The purpose that God has for your life, the plan that he has, you got to wear his blessings to fulfill it. You ain't going to do it by the natural order only. You got to have the blessing on you and the believer shall say. It. All right. Proverbs. Let's start in Proverbs 20. <laughs> verse six and seven. Proverbs 20, hallelujah, verse 6 and 7. I ain't going to be long today, but I'm going to be strong. Amen. Yes, it's Papa Day today. I'm going to let you go eat all the chicken you want to eat today. In Jesus' name. <laughs> rib out. <laughs> Throw a rib out in there. All right, that's what I'm talking about. And let it run over the side of the plate, Larry. <laughs> All right. Proverbs 20. But you know you're going to hear God's wisdom in here today for your life, don't you? You know that. How many of you know that already? How many of you are going with pastor already? You're going to go with me? You know I'm going to take you somewhere. Verse 6 of that particular book. Listen to what it says. Most men will proclaim each his own goodness. I'm reading from the New King James. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find him. Of, of what kind of man? Faithful. A faithful man. Now, we're talking about a blessed man today. One of, the, one of the criterias for a man to be blessed in life and to wear it is that he got to be faithful. He got to be what? Faithful. How can you be what you ain't been trained to be? You have to learn it. You have to learn it. Now, what is, what is it meant by to be faithful? It's to follow through with a commitment regardless of the difficulty. To follow through with a commitment regardless of the difficulty. That means you be slow to make promises because you know once you do it, you got to follow through no matter how difficult. Now, that's, now that's good for the brothers to hear this on because we are good rappers naturally. And being in good rappers when your nature ain't been changed, you're a good liar too. Uh, you're convincing. Huh? And we can say some stuff to get what we want. Oh, yes, we can. But a faithful man, who can find him? That means he's becoming rare. The society we're living in. Don't put the value on faithfulness no more, but God does. And the Bible says, who can find one? That means you've been sought for. You've been looked for. 
Every, now, now, here's the other side. That every man proclaim his own goodness in his own. In other words, all of us can cut off by how good we are to ourselves. Amen. But God has a yardstick that's different than ours. His measurement is a little different than ours, huh? We can say one thing and it'd be something else. How many of you agree with Pastor on that? Come on, talk to me now. Huh? Who can find them? Listen to what verse 7 said. The righteous man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. So not only that we can wear the blessing, but we can transmit it to our children. Can't we do it? Huh? How many of you done heard, how many of you done, how many remember a long time ago this dance was out called the bump? Huh? How many of you remember? Some of you do. Lord have mercy. Only a few in here don't know about the bump. That means you 18. <laughs> the bump. But then there's an app out now that you can get on your phone called The Bump. And that app means once you put it on your phone and you can put it by another phone and you bump the phone, what's on that phone will go right inside the other phone. What's on that phone will go right inside the other phone. I'm gonna bump you in here today. What's on me gonna go right inside the people in this place today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift your hand because you're going to receive the bump. <laughs> I got to teach you a little bit before I start acting up in here now. All right. Now, if that, if that is so, look at, now everybody say a faithful man three times. Come on, brother. A faithful man. A faithful man. A faithful man. That means we, we follow through with our commitments regardless of the difficulty. We follow what we do, brothers. We, we don't stop. This is hard. No, we don't care about hard. We follow through. No matter how difficult it is. So that means when we make promises to our family, we follow through. No matter how difficult. What we do, brothers? Follow through. You do what you say. No matter how difficult. And the Bible says by doing that, by keeping our word, our children will learn to keep theirs. And they'll begin wearing the same blessing we're wearing. Come on. Don't look at the condition, what's going on around you and your family right now. Don't be moved by that. One of the things a blessed man have learned is the power of the word. That you learn to call things that be not. As though they were. That changes it to be what God said. Talk to me. You can change facts by truth. No matter about the dysfunction in our family or our household. Your words can change them. And if God's word have begun to change you, you know it work. Talk to me in here. Shouldn't we watch over what we say? This is a good Father Day today here. Men going to wear the blessing. Oh, God going to send some blessed men back in the house. How, I say God going to send some blessed men. Some of you don't even really realize this is set up for you. You know, I know you don't. You don't. But this is better than money, what you going to get in here today. huh? Because when money stops, the blessing will keep on going for you. Talk to me. Money bring goods and services to you, but the blessing will bring protection. The blessing will bring victory. The blessing will turn impossible situation around. The blessing will fulfill your dream. The blessing will send you off being a blessing to your society, to your generation. The blessing can take nothing and nobody and make it something and somebody. Hallelujah. The blessing will extend your life. In the earth. Somebody lift their hand and decree. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Father. that I'm already blessed, I'm already blessed and I receive greater blessing today. 
because it pleased you, Lord, that I live blessed in the earth. Abraham declared to his seed that if we learn certain truth, we begin to bless ourselves. Now, you've been taught by your society how to curse yourself, and you think it's normal. But God will teach you how to bless yourself by principle, by the order of the Bible, will cause you to bless yourself. What is the blessing? It's empowerment. What is the blessing? It's favor. What is the blessing? It's to go forward, to break out, to advance, to get ahead, to do good, to find favor and success in what you do. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. If you stay with God, God's blessing will manifest. And overnight, he can turn almost the most difficult life into, a, into a, a blooming blossom. That's why you have to stay with it. Stand steadfast. Unmoved by the conditions around you. Unmoved by the time that it's taking to see it fulfilled. Because the, the only thing the blessing can't do is fail you. Praise God. I'm here today in the name of Jesus to bring the greater blessing upon his men. Hallelujah. With your black self, you're going out of here black and blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. We're going to break some of that stuff uh, Minister Joseph was giving us today off of us. We ain't a victim. We are the set apart, and we're going to be able to reach into the ghetto Hallelujah. and bring those that are out of their hopeless condition Amen. because we are blessed. Amen. And if you stay blessed, then your pocketbook will start testifying. Your wallet will start testifying. Your accounts will start testifying. Your circumstances and conditions around you will start testifying. If God have to, he will get something to you. If he have to use somebody on the, on the opposite part of the globe, there's nothing that can hinder him from prospering your life and blessing your life when you begin to understand your requirements from him. And that's what I want to help you with today. In Jesus' name. You don't wear it. You're going to wear it. Hallelujah. Proverbs 28. What a, who, who I say is the foundation of the home? The man. <laughs> you should have seen how Dwayne said. Dwayne said, the man. No doubt about it. You better hear this. Thank you, Pastor Dwayne, for helping me there. Because <laughs> that's so. Amen. Your society is trying to condition you to, to, to a lot of twisted, perverted ways. But God ordained that a man be the foundation of the house. Amen. And that's the way it is. You got uh, Proverbs 28, verse 20. What it says? Uh, what kind of man? A man that followed through with a commitment regardless of how difficult. See? A man that followed through with a commitment regardless of how difficult, that's what it means, right? So we know what kind of man we're talking about, right? So a faithful man will what? Will abound with blessings. It didn't say a blessing. It said blessing. It's an S on it. Huh? That's the way you like it. With an S on it. Blessing. That's multiple. Right? A faithful man, a man that followed through with his commitments no matter how difficult, shall abound with blessings. But he that make haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Uh-huh. Glory to God. 
You like that? Praise God. Then stay with me today. Huh? Listen what jo Joel 3 and 9 said. Joel called some men mighty men. Now that's the way God can do you. Right in the condition you're in, he'll call you something you're not. In the natural order, you're not. But he know once you receive and believe, it will begin to transform you. So Joel said, wake up the mighty men. Why, why, why mighty men need to be wake up, woke up? They're mighty and don't know it. Their condition has made them to believe something else about themselves. So they need to be awakened to their, to their stand before God. God say you're mighty. Huh? Now how that, how that go across on you when you've been called all kind of names? Huh? That, that, go, that goes against what you've been called. Talk to me. Oh, Lord have mercy. You know. The, 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 the influence, the power of words, man, can decide whether you be successful or whether you don't be successful. And, and I tell you right now, those around you close can influence you based upon how they say it to you, how they talk to you. Amen. You can be mighty and lose your might just listening to the wrong things said about you. You was mighty before God, mighty by grace, but you're not mighty in manifestation because you're believing lies. You got Joel, Joel 3 and 9? Who have it? Read it out to pastor. Come on, read it to me. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up who? The, wake up what men? The mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Wake up, the mighty men. Hallelujah. Some of us been really affected just because you're black. But you didn't vote on it. You didn't vote to be black. So God, must, must, God couldn't have did you an injustice to make you uh, black and then say that you're less than. No, no, but the society you live in will try to make you believe different. I don't know, somewhere with me, I never had that issue. I, I didn't never need nobody to help me believe that somebody else, I was just as good as them. I always thought I was better. Talk to me now, really. I ain't never had no self-esteem problem with that. I'm serious. Uh, holding my head down while I talk to somebody, I look them right in their face. Glory to God. But some of us, we have come from that, and we're still struggling with it. You're trying to get your worth and identity based upon somebody confirming you. But you're mighty. You're mighty because God has made you that way. He has have, he have made a deposit inside of you called the seed of his son. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that seed is breaking forth inside of your life now, causing you to be all that God wants you to be and so much more. Lift your hand and declare, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. and I'm mighty before the Lord. Wake up the mighty men. Wake up the mighty men. Wake up. And that means if you're mighty, you're not held, you're not held captive by addictions. Come on, talk to me. You're not a victim of any addiction. Why? You're mighty. And if something has been warring in your soul and warring against your life, then you got to do what God called us to do. That is speak to it. You talk to it until it's, it loses gravity and grip over your life. You can take words from your mouth. Why? Jesus said your words are now spirit and they're life. You can speak life over your life. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. You can call the thing that's not as though it's work. Hallelujah. You can declare over any addiction. I'm a free man and whom the son set free is free indeed. I refuse to be a victim to any beggarly element. 
The apostle Paul said, do not be a entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What God has snatched you out of, don't you go back to it. You're free. And you're blessed. That's part of the freedom. The blessing is what made me free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's go on here. Since you're so excited. Amen. Wake up the mighty man. I said wake up the mighty man. Uh, now here's another thing that we need to have. If we're going to be walking, if we're going to walk as mighty men, the first thing you got to do is know God. Ain't no substitute for you knowing God. You must know God. How are you going to be mighty without God? You must know God for yourself. I am convinced. Now, I don't say this to put folks down because I know this, but I, I, I just know it. There's not a lot of people really know God. I'm telling you. <laughs> you think there's a bunch of people that talk about God but don't know him. Because the only way to know God, you have to become intimate with him. You have to spend time that costs you time in order to come up knowing God. There's no quick fix to knowing God. Even though I'm going to bless you up here today, you still will have to penetrate God for yourself. You will have to pursue him for yourself. The Bible says if I get close to him, he'll get closer to me. How close do you want? Close as you want to get. That's how close God will get to you. How close do you want to be to God? You decide how close you want to be. Oh, I know. I came here to bless you today. You may not be getting excited about this, but this will take you for the long haul, what I'm teaching you today. You must know God for yourself, and especially in this time that we're living in. But a lot of people will be talking about God that don't know nothing about him. Religion will not reveal God to you. No religion. They come by the millions. But no religion can open up your spirit to heaven but Jesus. And therefore, therefore what opens us up to God is not a religion, it's a person. God came as a person to reveal himself to man. Glory to God. They that, they, that, they that learn of him will bless themselves in the earth. You want to be blessed, thoroughly blessed, get to know God. Ida Hosa told me years ago, Christ, he that know Christ has everything. He told me that. That wasn't deep, but that was powerful. Get to know God and you got everything that life can give you. What you don't have, dream bigger. What you don't have, dream longer. What money telling you you can't have, dream with God. He'll change it. Your landscape can change. You ain't seen all you're going to see yet. There's some more on your journey. I say there's some more on your journey. Some of you is just in the first phase. Some of you in the second phase. Some of you in the third phase. And I'm telling you, he saved the best for last. Lord, help us on our journey. That's what bless is. God helping me through this life called life. That bring all kind of things your way. Some good, some bad. Some unexpected. But the blessing equips me. And fortifies me for whatever may come my way. I can handle it because I'm blessed. What about you, dear friend? What about you? Can you handle life or is life beating you up? Is life telling you that you're not going to make it? You're designed to control it. See, the sister's getting more than the brothers right now. Okay, then. All right. All right now. Give me some help then. 
This ain't even mama days, but I see some sisters soaking. Pastor, you ain't talking to the men, but I'm getting this. Let's praise God for a moment here. Let's praise God for a moment. Eh, la basa que la donoso, shekala la made. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all know what's been happening to me on the last couple of Sundays. I've been preaching every Sunday. <laughs> you folks, I'm telling you, you pull it out of a man. I come, I have my notions laid out. I'm going to say one, two, three, and then never get one, two, three in here. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. Nothing else matter. Because you get in the position of the blessed, you will see nothing else that people put all the weight and emphasis on. It don't even matter. Because the blessing will overturn it. The blessing will remove it. The blessing will bring it forth. The blessing, if it have to, will create it for you. Who you don't know that you need to know, the blessing will make them cross your path. That's what the devil didn't factor in, that in the end time, God would be get, pouring out greater blessings on his church, on his people, and ain't nothing the society that we're living in can stop the greater blessing of God upon a man and a woman. Some of the battles men you have fought in, some of the battles we done fought in our relationship about, all it was was the devil was doing everything he could to withstand and to stop the connection coming between the man and the woman so that the blessing would manifest. Some of the fights you're in right now in your house, you think it's over money, it's over the blessing. Because if the blessing hit the house, the money will run in the house. The favor will come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord Jesus, help us here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, Lord. Number one, I must what? Know God. Huh? That means intimate. Right? Intimate like Adam knew Eve. That's how intimate it's got to be. Number two, you got you to gotta have the mind of Christ. Come on, talk to me. Brothers, if we don't let God's word rule our mind, sin will. Listen to me, man. If you don't let God's word rule your mind, sin will do it. You don't have no vote on getting in the word. You must get in the word. Because you can't have the mind of Christ apart from the word. Some things that comes in your mind, they are devil induced. You got to be able to know how to sift that stuff out of there. Some things God ain't going to do a thing. He going to stand back and see, will you cast down that imagination? Will you bring that high thing down that's speaking against this order for your life? You must have the mind of Christ. That's what Romans said. That's what Romans said to us. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, Romans 5, shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. Then it goes on to verse 20. It said that sin will not reign over you, over you but grace, righteousness received through grace will reign over you. Something is always fighting to reign over your life. You got to know where the fight is at. It's not, it's not in the flesh only. It starts in the mind and it manifests in the flesh. So if God's word ain't there to reign over your mind, sin will take the place of it. Why you were carrying a Bible, going to church all the time. But you're thinking like a heathen. Amen. You're not, you're, you're not seeing how to be a greater blessing. You're seeing how to get over all the time. 
how to take advantage of somebody. That's that old strip. And that's one of the primary things the word does. It eradicates that old strip you've been living by. You had one before you came to God. And when you don't get the word, you'll keep going back to it, checking up on it. Keep going back to it, working your, your thing, as they say. Huh? Your mojo. Every man got an old mojo he work. Jesus want to give you a new mind. You quit working the mojo. You begin to work the, God, the word of God. Huh? Now the sisters want me to tell you what your mojo is. <laughs> the look I'm getting from the sisters. What is that mojo, Pastor? Tell it. Hallelujah. <laughs> you find that? Let's go over that 1 Corinthians chapter 2 for a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Brothers, are you receiving? You must receive early here now because I told you I ain't going to be long. Amen. But I will be what? Strong. Am I being strong? Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's look at verse 9 through 14 of that book. Hallelujah. I must know God, right? I must receive the mind of Christ, right? Listen to what it said in verse 9. But eyes hadn't, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man or the spirit of man the things, the what? The things which God had prepared for them who what? Thank God right now he has some things prepared for you. Hallelujah. Huh? How many of you like me that if God got it prepared for you, you like to have it before you go to be the, with the Lord uh, before you die? Huh? Uh-uh. What God is talking about here, this is not, in a, this is not a heavenly blessing. Lord, if you got it for us men, we like to have it now. In Jesus' name. How about that, brothers? Could you stand to have what God's been preparing for you now? Would you like to have it now? The Bible says your eyes haven't seen it yet. So I don't know what all you've seen, but you ain't seen this yet. Your ears ain't heard it yet. Your spirit ain't even comprehended yet. The things that God has prepared. He's been working on something for you, and he got to get you in the place of the blessing to deliver it. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many of you know you blessed just to be in the part of Abundant Light Church? Do you know that? Yeah, come on, talk to me. Listen, some got, some got deceived. They thought warfare meant that, that that was defeat. They didn't know that come with grace. God graces your life. Warfare shows up around it. Some of them thought because it wasn't instant presto that the word of God is lying, but God cannot lie. What he say, he will do it. It must come to pass. How many of you want abundant life to have so much blessings on it that we can possess the next level church with no problem? Not, no, don't let's don't stop there. How many of you know we got several churches that came up under us already? Already. But how many of you know there's some more churches we need to plant all over the place? I don't believe God has opened doors for us to go to nations and don't leave some churches in some of them places. So we're talking about international churches. You know you got to be blessed to do that. You can't do that in the natural. Are you kidding me? We can't even feed the hungry people that come up here in the natural only. You know what I mean? After you give them a little bit out of your kitchen, after a while you say, wait a minute here now. Huh? I gave you a loaf of bread and a chicken last week. But when you're blessed, you can feed the hungry. As long as they're hungry, the supply will come. Hey!
When you're blessed, you can close those who don't have no clothes. Glory to God. I don't care how much stuff I get away, this won't keep coming back. I'm serious. I just go through giving it, giving it away. I have a give out a, a season. I do it twice a year. And I, I'm telling you, I need to create more room the way God started bringing stuff back to me. That's what happened to the blessing, don't it? Some of you still fussing over you ain't got enough stuff to wear. When you're going to give away something you got that ain't old. Wore out, Larry said. Give some of them shoes the way you like. They're hurting your feet anyhow, so we're going to pass, <laughs> pass them down to somebody. Give me some help in here. No, we're talking about getting at a place we don't even have to worry about this kind of stuff because God want to show out through our life. That's what blessing's all about. It ain't all for you. Hmm? We're going to keep snatching this money from the wicked in the realm of the spirit till it starts hitting your accounts, hitting your banks, hitting your notes, hitting your, come on, talk to me, canceling debt. See, really what I'm giving you all today is off, the offshoot of the word encounter, the last service. But since you didn't come to hear the word, we got to give it to you on Papa Day. God wants you blessed. Hallelujah. And God wants us so blessed that it will start keeping the vultures away from you. Some of you have been fighting some vultures that you're going to have to stop fighting them. Because the blessing going to so come on you that the blessing going to begin to repel away the vultures from you. The vultures are those things that are coming only to take from you. Only have a mission to do nothing but derail you and take from you. But the blessing, glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Come on, let me talk to you just a little bit more here. I'm not quite there yet. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lord have mercy. What I got to have as a man discerned it. Oh, I didn't finish reading uh, 1 Corinthians 9 2, did I? Uh, 2 and 9, did I? Uh, no, I didn't, because I want you to see that you got to get the mind of Christ. I told you about uh, eyes hadn't seen and ears hadn't heard, but that wasn't the end of that subject. Uh-uh, Holy Spirit correcting me on that one. He wants you to have the wisdom. He wants you to have his mind so he can instruct you. Listen what it said. But God had revealed them unto us how? Come on, brothers, lift your hand up. Say, thank you, Father. You never stop talking to my spirit. By your spirit. And I'm growing in grace to learn to hear you better. I heard Pastor Olu did an outstanding teaching on the human spirit, training and developing the human spirit. Amen. Why some of you don't know what I'm talking about? You didn't come to Bible study. Who said, ouch? <laughs> okay. That's enough to make me move on, just that ouch. That means, forgive us, Pastor. Okay, I will. All right. But the Bible here says, for the spirits, for the spirit search, God had revealed them unto us. How? Some things ain't going to come to your head that you need. It's going to come in your spirit, then to your mind. For the spirit searches, how, how many things? All things. What else? Yes, the deep things of God. Come on. For what man know the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God. How many know it? Know it, no man. But who know? The Holy Spirit know what my mind can't learn by the natural order. Come on. Now we have not received what? The spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of who? God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. See, God keep talking about these things he got for you. And he said they're free. Which things also we speak not in the words which man wisdom teach, but which what? Which the Holy Ghost teach, so the Holy Ghost can teach you. I want to say that again. The Holy Ghost can do what? 
How many men in here going to let the Holy Ghost teach you something? How many of you going to start letting them teach you greater things? Hallelujah. You already decide you want to be greater, greater blessings on your life. When you let the Holy Spirit teach you, he is the master teacher. It doesn't matter what man was in, what in your life or was in your life that didn't teach you. The Holy Spirit can teach you. I'm proof of that. That the Holy Spirit can teach a man. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Woo! I'm going to stop there for a second. But let's go to that next verse and I'm going to come back to that. But which the natural man received not. What man don't get this? Carnal men. Men that ain't got nothing on their mind but games, toys, entertainment, sports. Ain't nothing wrong with these things, but you can't live there 24-7 and wear what we talking about. Talk to me. Huh? You can't live there 24-7 with junk only going inside of your head. Games, playing, nothing but that kind of stuff. It, it has its place, but it can't take the place of revelation. And let me tell you something, sister. You don't want nobody that's full of game and entertainment only. I don't care how they look. You better get somebody that understands what their office is. A man is appointed to an office to become a father. And the first office he become a priest. He must know how to cover you. By God teaching him how he cover him. No so delicate basa. You gotta have something more than big dimples in a jaw and bow legs to look at. You better have a man that know how to cover you when the fire's hot. When the enemy is assaulting your life. You can't cover nobody if you ain't learned to be covered yourself. You may think, sister, you want a player, but you want a prophet. <laughs> Somebody that can prophesy over your future, over your destiny. And you know it's going to come to pass because he's speaking on behalf of God over you. Lift your hand, brothers. You're going to wear the blessing. You're going to wear it in the name of Jesus. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. But when I became a man, he still had a physical body, but he said, but I hadn't stepped into manhood. Why? Because he wasn't mature in his speech. He wasn't mature in his understanding. He wasn't mature in his thinking. His thinking was still running amok. We call it stinking thinking. Where your mind all over the place. And you won't bring it in. Hmm? My office called me. Whether I'm equipped or not, I'm called by God to be a priest, to be a prophet, to be a teacher, to be a protector, and to be a provider for the woman I meet. And if I ain't been trained by the Holy Ghost who is the teacher, then I got to keep playing, going in the game bag for stuff I should be walking in that the family need from me. And locker room games. And movies that defile your spirit. You can't live that in your relationship. You got to have God's word and the Holy Ghost teaching you. The Bible says he will instruct you by giving you God's mind on things. And sometimes God giving it to you, but because the place you're in, you ain't picking up like you should. Trial and error is part of your learning, though. It don't, it'll never stop because you missed it. That's a learning curve. You're going to go right around it, and you'll do it better. And the believer shall say you see, I'm out, of, I'm out of time with all numbers up there. Y'all know I was just getting started. I was just getting started. But I'm going to bless you today. 
in the name of Jesus. Some of your brothers look like you said, well, just give us one more, two more, Pastor Bear. Well, since you're looking so serious about it, I'll do it for you. Because this is Papa Day today. Because, see, you don't want to keep missing it because your daddy didn't teach you. You don't want to keep missing it because he wasn't an example to you. Your father in heaven now become your example. And he makes up, if my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. God said, I'll take you up where you were left by humans. Let me do it for you. Let me show you who I am. Let me show you there's no need in life I can't meet for you. Let me show you I'll bless you to others get tired of seeing how blessed you are. Hallelujah. And that's the, Bible, the man that the Bible talking about when he find a wife. See, that's God. That's what God talking about. That man finds a good thing and obtain favor before the Lord. Come on, talk to me. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Let's give the Lord a little hand praise right now. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, I had a man call me from Texas. I'm telling y'all. Crying through. I ain't heard from him. I don't know when. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm blessed now that I'm hearing, hearing your voice. Said, Who is this? <laughs> he said, you laid your hands on me and I ain't been the same. No man ever did that to me. He said, I'm still affected by you blessing me. And here's some of you, I done bless you every year. You still ain't receive it. Glory to God. On this end, it worked. You got to open up. Praise God. I, know, I know what I'm saying here. You know, there's some brothers in here that told me, Pastor, my whole life done changed since I've been connected to the grace on your life. Let's not be, let's not be ignorant to this. There's grace God put on men's lives for men. There's, yeah, come on, talk to me in here. Are you kidding me? Ida Hosa was a man I met from Nigeria. He put his hands on me and he changed my life. He marked me by the blessing that was on him. Said it had nothing to do with that. He was a Nigerian, I was American. God sent them across the water. Because God knew, and one, God knew that the day he was blessing me back then, that I would be blessing you today. By the same blessing. By the same blessing. That a world changer. <laughs> you sound like you're bragging. I know it. A world changer. Placed it on me. Can't oboe shot. And he had you and your children and your family and your health and your prosperity in mind. Hallelujah. He had it in mind. I saw this. I concluded with this. I got so much in my spirit. But I saw this. I think this is going to be most relevant for you. The Bible said that Abraham in Genesis 20 came to a man to a place where after the first time God blessed him because of a king ransom wanting Sarah. Now he's in another place, and the Bible says King Abimelech decided that he wanted uh, Sarah when he saw him. And Abraham and Sarah had already plotted to tell a story a certain way. He said, now when we get to these places, don't tell nobody you're my wife. Tell them you're my sister. Half true. Which is what? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so tell them you're my sister. Because, listen what he said, when they see you, now, I don't know what God did to Sarah. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I do not know, because she was 90. But Abraham said, when the men see you, they will kill me for you. That's what I said, wow. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> 
She was 90. And, and a fox. <laughs> Today we would call her a fox at 90. At 90. What in the world? And, she, and Abraham knew what he was talking about because the moment the king saw, he said, bring her to my harem. I think he put the mother girls out there. <laughs> I think he put the mother girls out of there. And the Bible said when the king did it, the Bible said right at time of sleeping, when he went to sleep, God came yes, sir. in his sleep. And the Bible said he dreamed, and God talked to him in his dream. He said, the woman that you got in this, this tent is another man's wife. And if you touch her, you are a dead man. Whoa. She's not only a fox at 90, but God is protecting her. Because she's blessed. And the Bible said, the, the Bible said, the king says to God, Far be it from you to kill a righteous nation, to destroy a righteous nation. I did this out of the integrity of my heart. God said, I know it. That's the reason you ain't dead. He said, I saw it in your heart that you was misled by the information you got. Listen what God said. Therefore, I protected you from sinning against me. You know what that means? He mean, <laughs> it meant Sarah was laying there beside you, but I ain't going to let you feel not one thing. Because wow. <laughs> I'll kill you if you follow what you feel. <laughs> Give me some help in here. I say, give me some help in here. Now, now, now I'm, I'm trying to help you with something here now. And the Bible said, once the king said that, then the Bible said, not only, God said, not only you, but all that concern you. What is God telling? He said, your whole nation will die over one woman. I killed the whole nation. evil <laughs> side. You don't hear me. God said, I'll wipe out this whole nation for touching this blessed woman. I'm her protector. Oh, somebody need to raise their hand and thank God for being your protector. He is your protector. You don't have no other one. God throw roadblocks, stopped them. Now watch this. God said, now, for me to straighten out this mess you're in, you're going to have to go to Abraham and tell Abraham to pray for you, for he is a prophet. Now I had a little hard time with that. Because I know I'm, I'm in trouble because this man told me a lie. Now I got to go to him and let him pray for me? Oh, my goodness. He's so blessed that God is overlooking. You don't hear me? I said, God is overlooking. Say, no, 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 no. I can heal you, but I can't go around him. Your healing won't come till he pray for you. Then the Bible says he told Sarah, he said, I'm giving you 1,000 shackles to your husband. For he's a covering of your eyes. I'm making sure that not only I compensate him, I'm compensating you because I brought you in front of my service. I'm talking about bless. When you're blessed, God will come in dreams and talk to people on your behalf. When you're blessed, God will send angels who will avenge on your behalf. 
Kadebo. When you're, when you're blessed and wearing the blessing. Are you listening to me? Whatever the devil meant for evil, I hear it now. God is making it work together for your good. You will be better from what the devil meant from evil. Somebody praise him right now. Right now. 